Roll. We are recording now. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, today is Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. This is the uh, Cottonwood Heights City Council work session, and we're appreciative for everybody being here and for those that are joining us online. So we're grateful to have uh, our Assistant Chief Paul Brenneman with us too. Thank you, sir. So thanks for being here. So the first item on our agenda is going to be a review of our business meeting agenda this evening. So I have asked uh, our council member. Ellen Burrell to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. Thank you, Ellen. We'll have a citizen comment period tonight. Uh, and then we will also have a public hearing session uh, that is specific to 4.1, which is the uh, proposed amended compensation schedule for the city's elected and appointed statutory officers. That is a continuation um, from the open or from the public hearing that we opened on July 19th. Uh, I don't know. Do you want? Do we? I, I think we probably all feel pretty comfortable. Do you need to mention anything on it? The only thing I would say is we went through a process, obviously a market study process, and that's what's basing the proposed figures. And and I mentioned that at the last public hearing. I'm happy to do that again if you want me to. But that's that's yeah, just real briefly, probably. Yes, I'll have you talk about it yep. again. Yep. Thanks. <clears throat> and uh, and then we, I will plan on um, closing that uh, public hearing and, and following through with the vote later. But th this evening, we'll also have our uh, our quarterly reports from both our police department. We'll have Police Lieutenant Dan Bartlett get that report to us. And then we'll have our public works report. So our public works director, Matt Ship will give us his, his report as well. Our legislative actions for tonight are like I mentioned, the first one, the consideration of ordinance three to six, approving an amended compensation schedule for the city's elected and appointed officers. And uh, so I will go, we will, we will go forward and, and vote uh, with that. And then, and then the second one is uh, consideration of resolution 2022-41, accepting a bid and approving entry into a construction contract with advanced paving and construction. LLC for the 2022 citywide chip sale project. So Matt will probably have you could give us some background on that right now before, because uh, that will not be a, a anyway. If you okay, uh, thank you, Mayor. This is uh, this is an extension, or if you will, of year four projects for the uh, five year maintenance program on our roads. This is wrapping up the year four. This is for chip seal. Now we've done a lot of slurry. And we'll hear about that tonight. But this is for actual chip seal projects on uh, 7200 30th, 30th East or 3000 and uh, Danish Road. So, do you want to explain the difference between chip sure. and slurry? Okay, so chip seal really it's it's a it's a eighth inch rock. It's an actual rock. What you do is you go and you spray a heavy tar or heavy uh, sealant down. You come along behind with these rocks and you spread the rocks. So it's it's a lot heavier. When you talk seal coatings, it falls into those categories, but it's a very heavy and it has a very heavy travel surface. And that's used for main roads typically um, because of the use. And the slurry, it, oh, and to finish it out, you you some cases will compact it into that. And then you come along behind it and you spray a, a fog seal, it's called to seal it all up. The road will be white for a long for a while while we're working on it, and then all of a sudden it will be changed to black with the fog seal. So we get a lot of calls in that interim. Why is our why are our roads white now as opposed to black like you know asphalt? So anyway, that is a chip seal. The slurry seal, once again, it's a seal coat as well, except this is a sand mix in an emulsion, and that's all mixed together, and it comes out and you actually spread that, and it's a thinner material. We usually use it on subdivisions um, because of low vol lower volume of traffic. It's less expensive than the chip seal. Um, and it lasts, it gives you five to eight years of uh, surface life extension when you do that. So in the slurry, you're just going over cracks. Well, we crack seal it all. 
Um, well, we try to crack seal it all, but yes, you go over all of it um, with a crack seal and then same with the chip seal and then you follow it up with this surface seal coating. So this contract right now was out the bid and this is part of, like I said, client the end, end of year four, which was ending last fiscal year. Um, it's just getting to it right now. It's uh, the chip seal project. Okay. Great, so we will uh, uh, vote in on that as well. And then we'll finish tonight with our consent calendar. <clears throat> so our first uh, staff report today will be uh, a discussion on the, the Canyon Center traffic study that was recently completed. And uh, I'm gonna have our public works director as well, Matt Ship, lead this discussion for us. Thank you again. Um, okay, so Barrett Council and those out, I guess, in the listening audience, um, what we're bringing to you now, this was a study that the council wanted us to look at. Um, I believe it was at the beginning of this year. The council asked us to move forward with a study in the Canyon Center development area. Um, one of the issues that brought this forward um, as far as the Canyon Center was traffic, how the Canyon Center is impacting traffic in this general area, as well as through the neighborhoods. And what we've done is we've gone through and we've taken the canyons. One of the objectives of this project the study was to take the Canyon Center's traffic studies that they've done, they've done three studies so far on their traffic and to do a peer review on those to find out if one, you know, I'm not saying anybody's doing it wrong, but just to get another opinion on the traffic study. So part of the, the uh, task on this study was to review that. Another part of the task was to check the impacts of the Canyon Center traffic in the neighborhood um, another task was to look at some pedestrian safety in that general vicinity. Um, and then also to look at the traffic impacts in the neighborhood based on snow, uh, where we are with snow events. As, as you know, we'll get a lot of powder days, we'll get four or five big events during the year. And when that occurs, traffic in these neighborhoods really gets backed up from people trying to sneak through and bypass the intersection. And then finally, another one was looked at to look at parking, if you will, and how that is affected along Racket Club Drive. So these were the things that we looked at as we went through this study. Um, and what we're bringing to you tonight, I believe Tim handed out uh, the actual study itself. What I'm gonna do is uh, hit the highlights this evening and then open it obviously, uh, and then open it up for discussion from the council so that we can uh, get more direction on how you'd like us to proceed. Um, in conjunction with our, our uh, consulting engineer, which was Horox Engineering, uh, Public Works and Engineering and Community Development, we sat down and worked through the task that we thought would be affected, but would would, should be taken into account as we went through this study. So what I'd like to do is kind of go through a couple of the steps, show you the recommendations, and then turn it over to you, Mayor, for that discussion. So once again, the uh, study parameters that we discussed were the peer review of the CAP traffic center impact analysis that was done by Hales Engineering when they came through. Uh, we looked at reducing or stopping the pass-through traffic through the neighborhood west of Canyon Center. That has a lot to do with, like we said, the snow. Improve residential access to Fort Union. That was another complaint uh, issue that that, resident, that neighborhood has uh, because you have, when that backs up, getting out from Pippin, Reindeer, McIntosh, any of those, you, it's, it's very difficult to get out onto Fort Union. Um, improve, uh, provide and improve some pedestrian safety across Fort Union Boulevard, and we'll get into more detail on that. Reduce any commercial access to uh, the development through the neighborhood and to reduce, help reduce parking issues along Racket Club Drive. 
So as we went through this, um, this is real quick, the uh, peer review on uh, the Hales Engineering and what their report came back as. Uh, these are things that happened. The, inter the intersections um, through all of the Hales reports were reported as LOS or level of service were, were good, C above in that case, um, except for one, which was at the Wasatch Boulevard and Canyon Center, which is what we call level of service E. Um, remember level of service goes from A through F. So E's getting down there in a bad situation. Um, but we as a city have committed to improving that by putting in, help me out, Mike, it's the, the, the uh, southbound, a right turn only out of Canyon Center, but it, so it's a three quarter access. You can access Canyon Center from Wasatch going south mm -hmm. and going, uh, going north. It, yeah, it would and limit then, left turns then, out of Canyon Center. Left turns, it would limit it all to right north. turn only out of Canyon Center. Yeah. Going north. Yeah, because yeah. that's where the, the, the queue backs up because that's a hard turn to make. So the wait time the left turn yeah. stacks. And if you get rid of that turn, then the level of service clears up. So that's that's something the city's committed to. And that's a physical barrier. We have not put it on a project list yet, but just keep that in mind. That's uh um, we, so it backs up for people turning right up Big Cottonwood Canyon. The current backup is for people trying, trying to go left and trying to turn, turn left. left, right, go north out of Canyon Center on the oh, Wasatch. They can't because people are traffic going is south. Too, yeah, it's okay. queuing on the south and then northbound. It's just getting on there. Okay, well, yeah, coming you can't off across the south. Yeah, you can't right. cross the lane. Cross the Wasatch. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, and we looked at the annual growth rate with Wasatch Front. Uh, and their their projections, and at that point on 2000, uh, 2027 background, in a couple of years, the LOS was acceptable. Um, they added the project to the 2027, um, and in the Hale study, they also found that the uh, intersections were acceptable. Once again, this we're not talking about Wasatch and Canyon Center, we're talking about all the other the intersections. Um, if I may ask a point of clarification as you give your report, uh, my understanding of this study was to study, yes, uh, related to the Canyon Center, but particularly related to the Wasatch Boulevard and Fort Union intersection. So I'm surprised to see this report focused from what I can tell at a glance since I've just seen the study for the first time 15 minutes ago, uh, this seems to be focused on the neighborhoods, but my understanding was this was a traffic study to take into account the current and projected problems mm -hmm. with the intersection again of Wasatch Boulevard and Fort Union Boulevard in that whole area. Do I, am I mistaken on that? I, I, I'm, I don't, okay, I don't know if you are or not. I'm following what I felt was the direction. But, but it includes, the council. It, it, this is the area which it. includes that, yeah. that intersection. But we aren't making any recommendations well, on Wasatch. Well, I just read Wasatch the recommendations not, and they all strictly pertain to the neighborhoods uh, that correct. go on to Fort Union Boulevard. Wasatch is not a city road to that we can direct the improve that intersection. Yeah, but the residents are very concerned that this is all an integral thing. This is not this is not just a, a, a problem along Fort Union Boulevard with these streets. It's all integrally related to that intersection there where at the mouth of Big Cotton Canyon. Is there going to be data about that intersection? There's data in here about the intersection. Okay. There is. Okay. There is data, but there aren't recommendations for changing it. We have the EIS that's Dealing with that, we have a state road that's dealing yeah. with that. Um, we 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 don't have that in this report. Okay. Any improvements on that? We we focused on Fort Union and the impacts the Canyon Center has on the intersection of Wasatch and Fort Union and Canyon Center and as well as Racket Club and Fort Union, and then that bled over, if you will, based on the discussion into the neighborhoods. Okay. Well, the, will will it include potential for growth? Does, does the traffic study at that intersection 
Yeah, it takes into account Wasatch Front's model okay. for growth. Okay. That is correct. So, Matt, just to clarify, our road stops if you're going south. I'm sorry, if you're going east, it stops right at the, the beginning of the intersection. See where it's yeah. black? It's darker. Our, well, actually, I can't move. My or do we go way. back a ways? No, we are. It typically it goes back to about this point. It just just around the radius, if you will. So, so we're back a ways off of the right. Okay, and then it ends there in Wasatch and going up the canyon. That that's yeah. not the whole of Wasatch that you're seeing north and south is a state highway. Right, and going up the canyon is, and going up the canyon to the east is right. also a state highway. So this improvement that we'll make obviously will still be within our bounds to do. Yeah, I, we're, we're only doing. looking at the improvements at this point within the boundaries of Cottonwood Heights. Right. It's, it doesn't, there is no recommendations. And when the Canyon Center study was done, um, the couple of studies they've done, they looked at as well, the intersection, at their, in, their impacts to what occurs at Fort Union and Wasatch. And um, they are not contributing to that change to the level of service. So when they go from, say whatever they do that we're kind of waiting watching right now when they go from this intersection all the way to outside of our city to little cottonwood do they have plans to do something with this intersection i believe mike could probably best answer that the limits of the eis but i believe they does go down that far the EI, the intersection. yeah well the scope of it starts right at that intersection yeah south so that's the beginning mm -hmm. gotcha. Okay. Do people coming north or going west, will they be able to turn left to get in to that, uh, the restaurants and different things like that coming down the canyon? Could they not turn left because of what we do on that uh, right turn only? No, what the right turn yeah, only you're... is right here. Yeah. yeah, no, when you're coming down right there, can you not turn left? Well, yes, if I think the right you know, turn only is when, here when the, when the uh, apartment complex here was under consideration to be densified. That was back in October. Residents were led to believe that that Canyon Center Drive, which comes onto Wasatch Boulevard here, that the uh, it, it was going to be an end put to the ability of people to turn left. Yep. So that, that would sort That's of correct. reduce the cut through. And I don't see that in the recommendations. That, that is correct. That's what I just mentioned that it's it's shown. But on Fort Union Boulevard, just to clarify, you're coming down the canyon, you go through the intersection. Can you still turn left? Yes. Right, right here where yeah, we can. talked about the existing condition of Canyon Center Parkway, where we talked about the right out uh, movement out of Canyon Center. Right, and go that back. was something the city has already committed to doing. That, that's part of the development yes. conditions that's already, that were that's already put committed. into place that, that are part of that, which Correct. is that is the reason why this is not a specific recommendation because it's already a requirement it's of the development. What, when is that going to occur? When when the development is yeah, built. It's tied to the permit on the apartment building when that comes in. It's one of the requirements to install that that right turn only mechanism there to city standard. So, my, so what if it's never built, then it'll never happen. If the apartment complex is never built, then the re then the the, the uh, left hand turning ability will continue. Well, I would say on that, it, it's dependent upon what the city wants to do with that. We're requiring the developer to install that with development of that project as a condition. I see. Because if we if we make the decision to move that forward, we could definitely do that. Just go at our cost. Whereas with this, it would be the cost of the development. So yeah, it's taken into account in the modeling. It's uh, just not one of the recommendations because it's already on the books. Right. Nothing. See, to be done. 
something less accessible coming down. Okay, um, so then the, we looked at the 2027, the background with the project. Then we moved forward and the LOS was acceptable. Uh, the 2030 background plus the projects. So the project did not affect the level of service. It does increase traffic, but within the range of level of service acceptability. We're not saying there's no new traffic. What we're saying is there's a range of level of service they don't break that level of service to to require any changes. So we if they feel don't like go down to E or F, or they don't go down to D, or they they will stay B and C through there. They just don't break that that they don't move out of the yeah, category. They don't move out of the category. I mean, that's different than they just are better than F. So, no, no, yeah. no. They're not. No, it's not that case uh, it's in the little further it's in yeah, the okay. appendixes of the report you can find that but uh so yeah they don't uh require any changes to the existing level of service based on the 2030 background plus the project combined in there and what were the dates on which this traffic study was uh, taken when did it begin uh the actual data being collected when the did it begin and end what, what pages are those? There's a lot of something over here on the dates, the time. Um, yeah, there's the count the job. Well, I'll do my own. <laughs> <laughs> did you get this before I did, Sean? No, no, just now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot in here. There's a lot of detail. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you do it, when you're doing a traffic report, there, there is a great deal of detail in the appendix. Well, I, I'm giving you right now the recommendations and the highlights of the report. We're not looking to make a decision tonight. Well, I'm to just asking some, questions yeah, so that I can, I can, I can, uh, you know, yeah, try to talk about this intelligently since I've been just seeing this study right now. So, I where are the dates? I I see April. I see April of well, 2022. Go, go to the pages where you can actually see some of this detail here. Says for up to Okay, I see it. February. So some of it was oh, in no. February. From seven o'clock to eight forty. You're looking for right the there. traffic your count summary, Alan. So you're not yeah, there. Yeah. Your fingers are Keep going. Go back. Oh, go back. Go back where your hand is. Yeah. There you here. go. So look at each category. There's the time, the date. There's the traffic count on each one of those pages. They're in the well, appendix. I see them as April. Yes. Well, April is not peak ski season. And a Wednesday is not going to have peak uh, traffic, nor is a. There's some peak, it needs to be on peak on the peak the times bottom. is when the problem occurs. There's some on the bottom. If you go to the bottom of that page, you'll see another graph there on the bottom, and they're telling you the peak times. Yeah, and they're on a Wednesday. You don't have peak problems on a Wednesday or a Monday. When you do, or a Wednesday, I'm just looking. I'm I'm not. I'm seeing all Monday, Wednesday. Those are the dates and the days that they took the tra those traffic counts. Right, and we, we emphasized before this traffic study started that this needed to be during the peak periods of the winter ski season. And mid-April or uh, Monday and Wednesday are not going to capture peak times. So I, I just, if you could just steer me to where there's some peak periods, I, I, that's what I'm asking well, for. The peak times are in there. The ones that you had. That's when they took the traffic counts. They okay. also have count from Wasatch and from UDOT that are located in the in the report. When we discussed this, we 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 started this study in March, I believe, and we discussed the fact that this would not carry over into the winter and pick up any of the ski season because. It, it would go that well then this is not a viable a, this is not a so, viable traffic so, i'm sorry so, so what they're doing Ellen, is they're so they're adding so they so they're adding from previous peak times counts if i if i'm doing this right they're adding the, the numbers that they have for those counts so so for example in the bottom of where it says the summary they're adjusting they're adding those numbers look at January through February, that might, is that, would that So, so they're taking more? pre, but they're taking previous counts and adding them into- They the are taking the counts. And also when you're doing the traffic study, they, they've they taken the peak hour, which is the standard peak hour on the ICE, 
is, is behind this. And what we found out is based on the model, which is what we have to base our conclusions on, that the levels of service are fine. There are, though, times, extreme peaks, if you will, where we have traffic issues that are on Wasatch and on Fort Union, the snow days. And it's it's hard to, you, you don't design or build to maximum, uh, maximum lows. If you were to do that, then you're gonna have extremely large intersections and extremely large roads. You, you have to, so the studies with the peak hours and those things that are going on are showing that the levels of service through the intersections work in the modeling and in observation, but there are times the, the, during the ski season or the snow days, if you will, where we run into the problems. And the problems are, in my opinion, because of obviously the ski um, resorts and the traffic on Wasatch and the traffic going down Fort Union trying to get to Wasatch to go up the canyons. And I, and I believe that was that was the discussion we had when we went through this originally, because we knew the report was going to come back before this before December. Well, um, I guess I have another way to say kind of what you had said is when we build our we don't build our storm drain systems in Cottonwood Heights the same way they do, for example, in. Hawaii or uh, other places in the U.S. because we have different amounts of rainfall and stuff that we actually have to collect. So ours tend to be even smaller because we are in a desert. If we were to construct them for a, do we do 100 year storm? We basically build to 100 years. So to use that same analogy, we don't design our stormwater systems to the 500 year or let's just say snow day. All because if we do, our pipe would be a lot extremely large. Same concept goes with traffic. If you try to, if you try to design a parking lot, if you will, for a mall for Christmas Day, you are or Christmas Eve, I don't know what day it would be the worst, you would have a parking lot that would be used, half of it would be used at any given time. Maybe one, two days out of the year, it's full. So you have to, that's, we, we can design it to that standard if that's the standard you wish. And it's the same concept here. We, we, we can't, I, you cannot, I don't believe you should, you can, I shouldn't say you can't, you should not, in my opinion, design for the absolute worst because that, that occurs one or two times. And then you're left with this large area of non-use. Well, that's from the complaint people of parking lots of malls. Yeah, just, and that's why in this study, given. realizing that the Canyon Center wasn't making that great of a contribution to changing the level of service and the intersection at Fort Union and Wasatch, we took into account as well the neighborhood to the west that's having the biggest issue on those snow days, where they are the they are the residents who are facing the worst of the snow problems. Not the travelers, but the residents who try to get out and go places in their everyday lives. Um, so we went in and we looked at various options to try to help out the neighborhoods. Um, these are some things we came up with as a brainstorming when we went through it. We didn't pick all of these, but this was just a brainstorming. Um, striping, high T intersections at racket club, traffic circles, uh, bulb outs, speed limit signs. You can see the list, one ways, uh, uh, local traffic only signs, temporary closures during snow days. We went through a lot of these various choices, if you will, to try to come up with the best possible option that would meet those uh, five uh, four criteria that are there in the column to to uh, to make this to try to relieve that traffic burden on the heavy days in those neighborhoods. So what we came down to was 
after playing with it, going through it and looking at various things, we came down with some ideas we feel like would meet the requirements that we, we were looking at. One was a very something very simple as do not block the intersection striping, which will be taken care of during during this uh, striping contract. We, You're talking sorry, about Steve, so what is, I don't know what that okay. means. I'll show you in a sec. I'll, okay. I'll pull them up in a second here. Uh, the other is a hawk signal, which is a crosswalk signal from the parking lot over to the business center area. This cross Fort Union. Cross Fort Union, okay. correct. The areas that we can park control and that we can do. Yes. Um, signal at McIntosh, uh, reducing access to Reindeer and Pippin, permanent closure of Racket Club Drive at Canyon Center Parkway, and then uh, these all these four criteria helped us meet the uh, what we felt like was uh, needed to make help the neighborhood during these uh, times. May I, may I ask a point of clarification? When you talk about a permanent closure of Racket Club Drive at Canyon Center Parkway. Can you illustrate that? Yeah, I'm gonna show you here in just okay. a second. That's something the residents have actually been asked for. Yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah. this this goes through and looks at, this is, I'll highlight each one of these as we get into it, but you can see it at uh, McIntosh, a signal, um, a hawk signal there at the park and ride um, going across, striping, which we'll show you. And then there is some limited access on Reindeer Drive and Pippin Drive. And then finally, when we talk about the closure at Racket Club Drive and uh, Canyon Center area. And we'll go through these individually real quick as we look at them, to give you an idea. So one of the questions was when we talk about the uh, do not block intersection striping, that's really what this is. There's sign, there's uh, striping in the road that based, it just says do not block and it has a big X. So when you come to an intersection like this, so if a car is sitting here trying to get through or when that traffic backs up, it, it's a reminder, don't block the intersection so people can get in and out coming out of there. This is a proposed full signal at this location. Now- At a semaphore? Mm -hmm. At this location. What that does is it allows if you can't get out here at Reindeer or Pippin, or you don't want to go down to Nut, uh, Nutri or Nut Tree, um, you can come out here at McIntosh and pull out on the Fort Union and go east or west at a traffic signal. Gives you complete access to it. And when the road's backed up and plugged up during snow days, we will have traffic backed all the way up past Nutri on this road and it will go up and down and it's it's very hard to get through so a traffic signal is being proposed here the new do not blocks there is also proposal right now to make this a three-quarter access road so in other words on reindeer and on pippin in order to come out of reindeer and pippin you have you you can go east but to go west you need to come around and go to mcintosh and go or go down to Nutri as well, and you can go west. This gives you that access. You also gives you an access to turn in to there, and it gives you uh, an access to turn right on Pippin and Nutri. I mean, Reindeer. So on Pippin, you're talking coming out to Fort Union. You will they only allow them to turn right on those. And what's the those. purpose of that? to control the same concept, control that volume of traffic during the heavy snow days. Instead of, although the paint is a wonderful idea out there, it just pushes that traffic to two Pippin and Reindeer. You can come around and get on McIntosh and go out, especially on those So, so that would be a year round? This would be, be imposed on them yeah, year round? No it's being recommended. I'm not imposing it, I'm recommending. Um, foot arc counts right there. You don't show them. I don't um, remember. It's about 10,000. Oh, on Fort Union? Yeah, on Fort it's Union. Right a, anywhere from 8,900 to 10,000 is the number. Yeah. In that section. What? Daily? Uh, yeah. yeah. ABT, yeah. Average is that a daily yearly traffic. mean type? Yeah, thing? average daily traffic. That number of cars that pass through 
okay. that road in a day is the average daily traffic. Well, um, so there's a recommendation, okay. and, and these recommendations from are forgetting from what's that? Is that you guys or Horox or? It's I a guess, combination of us sitting down. I, I guess at, at 10,000, I would be curious as to why a, uh, a circle around about wasn't proposed. That, that's certainly doable. I mean, that, that it's at that level of it's true, true but, but, the, it. but it's yeah. and to go along with the same theme of maximum traffic at a roundabout, you put a roundabout in here, and if cars do back into that. And your cars are backing up. There is no gap, if you will, for that round. Yeah, you'd have. But if you're, I mean, that to paint's going to work. The paint and the roundabout. <laughs> yeah, but the paint is down there is just a reminder. It's yeah. not. Well, and I know we all what, probably don't have that. And the winter, right. and the other issue, other thing to remember in the winter, that paint How isn't always that big, visible. Yeah. So would you include a road sign with do not block that. intersection? Yeah. With, yeah. What are you yeah. thinking about that? And spikes yeah. kind of shoot up. If I remember my uh, some of the traffic, uh, a single lane should eat could actually do quite a bit more traffic on that. It's that again. That's a thought. That's why I was just we went to seven four. But I'm, I'm interested in what um, Chief uh, Pilgrim on the UFA. Uh, do you have any initial thoughts on these? Uh, I think, I think for us, we kind of have the ability to move traffic a little bit, but I mean, for us, it, and when it gets jammed up like this, it's all the accessory parking or any that might be on the side, whether it's signed or not, or just the ability for traffic to even just merge a little bit so we can get through. Those are the things we look at. A lot of times, I mean, we deal with traffic in a lot of different places. It's not necessarily easy to get through, but we have ways to get around it, right? I think the stuff that we don't want to see that challenges us are definitely like mediums and huge curves and like even roundabout could be an interesting thing depending on what we're dealing with there but i mean for the most part we just get used to dealing with traffic and impediments I and mean, we have to deal with the same thing everyone else does so anything we do to continue flow or provide space the big stuff that for us that we look at is exactly what you have here like those intersections uh, one of the biggest things we deal with is when they're blocked that's common people constantly are blocking intersections while they wait for a light to go. We can't get right. through there. It's the only thing that we can do that just, again, is a reminder to keep those spaces open, helps us as much as it helps the residents. Yes. So, so if I may add, these, these are recommendations. We're gonna have to have some pretty heavy conversations about implementation and budgeting on this. Yeah. Cause these are, these are all- Lights options. are expensive too, right? Yeah, they're, yeah. they're expensive. And so this, this is something, we'll, this is the beginning of conversations, right. especially as we lead into budget um, options to be looking at. And so just keep that in mind. This is the beginning of conversations on what we would look at here. And these recommendations, we, we can decide which ones to implement, which ones to not, or to implement all of them or not any of them. And that's something that the council will give direction on as we move forward. With, say it, with that being said, do very many of these, I, I know there's criteria that we have and they say, we'll give you this X amount of dollars as a grant or different things like that. You know I mean? We, we get put in a queue and they say, this meets that criteria. Does some of this, Matt, meet that criteria quite heavily, do you think? We, that's a good question. <clears throat> if you'll recall last year, we, we applied on Fort Union for uh, bike and pedestrian path trails to wide, not widen, but give more asphalt and make this uh, more pedestrian and bicycle friendly through this stretch. In other words, connect the park and ride down to the sidewalk further to the west. Um, we did not receive that grant, but we are still chasing it and we'll put in again. So these things can be used can be used in part of the grant if we can get one, and we can certainly add these things to it um, for that. It's it, it's all legitimate uh, projects for a type of grant of that nature. It's just a competition for the grant. And the regional nature of yes, this and the helps to yes. expand right. and extend. This but. is a great regional road for that. But like I said, the, the grant we went after that we were eligible for on this one, we didn't 
we didn't get the, the score high enough for that. We ended up with the Hawk signal over off of uh, Fort Union a little further to the west. Seems like the north side of this road, there's some pretty good property there that you could put a path. That's in. that's where we were looking. We had a we had a bicycle path in the road, a sidewalk, and we also have a 10-foot multi-use trail on the north side. This stretch of road from Wasatch to the bend, I think is somewhere where we're applying for some uh, infrastructure funds for road design. So that might be able to work as well, I think. So. so that's when we talk about the do not block paint, that's what we're discussing. And then this is one of the rec couple of the recommendations around this one. And once again, this is like Tim says, this is the beginning of the discussion. Uh, this is not uh, by any means the only option, but these are some options that we looked at and we felt like met that criteria that we were basing this on. Um, this is proposed Hawk signal at this location. And as you can see, it takes the parking lot. Um, I believe it would help out at certain times with uh, employees that work across the street. So they're not parking on Racket Club. Gives them a safe passage across Fort Union. That's some of the things we've heard from the business owners is crossing Fort Union there. Um, and once again, the do not block that we've discussed. Sorry, going back. Yeah. Is there any reason here as opposed to there? Uh, there's really, it was just laid out. There's uh, access there, and we, we plopped it in at the sidewalk location. No, there is no. It is, though, if it's too close to the intersection, then it becomes a, 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 a quasi semaphore, and you have to. Be careful so with that. So cars, road. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd be right now. That's a little close. If we were to get oh. federal funding for it, they would probably tell us no for a, for if you'll recall the Hawk signal we tried to put in at Mountain View Park. It was too close to a road. So we had to end up with a the yeah. flashing pedestrian. So we have to push it as far away from a road as we can. But right now it's put in there as a as it's a placeholder. May, may I understand what you just said? So when you say it was too close to a road. You're saying that putting a hawk light across Fort Union Boulevard was too close to an intersecting road? Yes. Which yes. road was too close? To one the of the cross streets. I don't recall. Yeah. It was one of the cross streets there by Mount View Park. I think 17th East, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I don't remember. It's I'd have to but, but on this one you're talking but on about this one i'm talking about big cottonwood canyon road oh. is putting the putting the hawk signal yeah, too close to an to intersection the oh. then it becomes like i said a quasi semaphore in which case cars yeah, turning in and out you're you're yeah you're going to do that you just do that but then you're too close to wasatch what what is the light. what is the preferred or the minimum distance that you need to have from a uh, an, is it another traffic light or an actual just where a road comes in? It's where a road intersects to like this one. Uh, mm -hmm. It's on the screen now. So Big Cottonwood Canyon and Racket Club, where they where they come out, the semi. I mean the the hawk signal is sitting back as far as we 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 felt like we wanted to push it right now and get use out of the parking lot. If you move too close to the intersection. You end up with, like I said, it becomes if somebody pushes that hawk button and they in cars will be turning out into the road and they're stopping in the middle of the intersection. So they don't we don't traffic engineers and that don't put those too close to intersections. So just so I understand and maybe the public can follow this too if they are out there. So the people that would use this hawk signal. Now I'm thinking if you park your car and you're trying to get on a bus. The bus, you, you're, you're having to go across Wasatch, SR 210 Wasatch Boulevard. I don't understand who is walking in that way in that. Oh, wait, that's Alpha. Is that Alpha Coffee there? Yeah, that's Alpha. Okay, I, okay, now I'm with These you. are the business. Well, I, okay, so I'm trying to better understand these Hawk signals because I am very much in favor of more Hawk signals in Cottonwood Heights. And for anybody who doesn't know what a hawk signal is, it's when an arm, a large metal arm, comes across the road 
and a pedestrian or a cyclist can hit a button and it gives flashing red lights to know the, let the cars know that they need to stop. So uh, for instance, at Westminster College, there's two Hawk lights uh, adjacent to the east side of Westminster College across 1300 East. And they're very near uh, intersecting streets. So that's why I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my arms around uh, this, that, you know, this uh, idea of staying away uh, from an intersecting street. I, I, I would think that what, what there is there by Westminster College would break that rule because there's intersecting streets all through that residential area. Sure, it, the standard is to keep it off of there. Now, I, I, I mentioned this earlier, if we try to get federal funding for a hawk signal, they will not allow it to go too close to an intersection. If you're using city funds, I see. That's if exactly you're using what your I'm own funds, yeah. then you certainly, you, you put it where it's safest, I mean, putting it at an intersection is not the safest thing in the world for a hawk signal um, because of that. This is actually a little close, but if you're doing city funds, this is very doable. Plus, it's coming out of the parking lot. It makes sense. Yeah, because if you're coming out of Rackett Center yeah, Drive, yeah. you can't see the, the signal yeah, you, you turn off to, yeah. to go west. You have to have some cueing. Yeah. Yeah. Make sense so then they can no, get I like this location. I didn't realize I was looking at the uh, yeah, I'm sorry. This the road that goes down wood. into uh, you know the old mill area. And so this is Rackett yeah, Club. I got this it. is Big Cottonwood. Right. Over here yeah. is Wasatch. Yep. I'm sorry. So Alpha Coffee in there. So that's yeah. what this would be for. And to cross Wasatch, you can go right now. There's the trail that's been we built. We called it for lack of a better term, the porcupine trail. Um, if you'll remember, that's uh, along here and you can go underneath that and come back up into the parking lot. Oh, uh -huh. so, yeah. Okay, so that obviously the cheapest thing would be to paint, right? I mean, that's something the that- The cheapest thing, yes, paint is, yeah. You just have to be doing it, but yes, cheap paint is. But I mean, just you could do things to mitigate some of the. Yeah, problems right now we can do a lot. Everything else, yes. right. and that's why this is phasing. I, I don't right. come in here expecting you to, as a council, to come up with you know, eight hundred thousand dollars right out of the gate to do something. Right. It, it's uh, so, and then finally, the last recommendation that we would have is to block wine sap and racket club. Now. This is not a, we are, we are looking at doing this for one purpose, well, two purposes. One is right now, so I'm gonna go back to the, the overall picture now that we've kind of got a general idea. One of the things that the residents are running into is when the traffic does back up, your, your Google Maps and your ways and all of those things tell you drop down new tree, cut through here, go through here, cut out here and jump up on Wasatch and head off to, to big and little Cottonwood Canyons. It yeah, tells you to make those bypasses mm -hmm. and they're on some snow days, these residents cannot actually back out of their driveway because cars are plugged up. When it plugs up or there's an avalanche in the canyon and they shut it down, they just keep stacking. They don't mm -hmm. quit stacking. And it, my snow plows have been stuck in there for 45 minutes sometimes and they can't go anywhere. Hmm. So it stacks up. So the idea is to stop permanently so that on Google and Waze and all those maps, that thing disappears because it's a permanent closure. And this is just a, you come, it's a, it's a, it's not a closed system, but it's, it stops the cut through there. It does leave, however, uh, a couple of driveways here. Um, that would, you know, it's not changing them, but they would get to their place of residence by always coming down to here on Racket Club. It also takes out, because we end up with a lot of parking up and through here, it pushes the parking closer to the businesses, yeah. away from the residents. It also, right here, when these apartments do come in, or the condos, if you will, to get to their condos, they have to come into here. There's not going to be this traffic cutting through. So a lot of that would go through the business areas. So that's the recommendation on closing that section. And it's a full closure with an area where we can push snow when we need to. It's got landscaping, if you will, to, to make it look, you know, you cannot drive through it yeah. at the end of the day. 
So I've gotten calls that big uh, semis turn on that street, you know, that are suppliers to restaurants and things and come come down and are turning around in a racket club circle. And yeah, so that would stop all of that. Well, so yeah, kind of. I mean, the reality is, is Waze or Google Maps taking it through there. If, if you're not going to be able to get out on uh, Rack, Rack Club Drive, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, then you're going to go through and you're going to get out on Pine Tree and Reindeer. Any of the, they all go back out. You it, yeah, it doesn't right. really it doesn't really solve that problem because if you come in here, you've got the option of going out there. But, this the, way. but the traffic yeah. pattern isn't such that they drop in new trees. No, that would help trees. Trees. Uh, they, But it, whether you come in here or here or here or here, it, whether you close it off there, that means you close it off here, here. I mean, to, to really get away from the Google learning what the new pattern is, that, that, that doesn't, that, I mean, well, I, I'm generally against the pattern. Off things anyway but that one the pattern happen. is when the traffic backs up on fort union they right. cut down new tree and they try yeah, to go line staff it's it's so that they, now, they, they, don't they, don't they don't they don't drop by the passing they don't come back on the fort uh, union they come out here and are able to turn right and and you know avoid all this I mean, to, to, to get off and then double back on Pippin would be the yeah. hope, you know. That, that I mean, if I, were, productive. <laughs> if I were to pick, if I were, you were to ask me a priority, that would be probably the first one along with striping and painting and some signage to eliminate it as, as soon as we can eliminate that traffic, snow traffic yeah. through the neighborhood. Um, and then from there, is you know, Canyon Center, Canyon Center Parkway is a public road, correct? Correct. We run into that same problem going on Wasatch, where they cut through all the neighborhoods to get a little yeah, bit it's farther. It's the same to thing. The it's the same thing yeah. on the Google other side, Mine right Shaft. There. Yeah, yeah going up and down Mine Shaft, yeah. and that's something we certainly, you know, I believe the police ban that during the winter and. And I want, I want to commend the police department. I've had a number of my constituents who live in the Prospector neighborhood remark that they very much appreciate the CFPB uh, enforcing and looking out for their neighborhood for all that cut through traffic. So thank you. This past winter, they were very made favorable comment. Thank you. Hey, Riley, how do you get past that wall of traffic? Is there enough room to get a truck? Past yeah, I, haven't, that? I haven't heard of any issues in there, but what I worry about is it gets tight. You know, I say if there's any parking or people doing that or snow or whatever, then it does just slow down. There's not a lot of room there just driving down that. So it can be a problem. But we all are traffic. I mean, we're, not, we're, we're going with the flow of traffic too, so it can be challenging. Which we'll probably just make more. It has to get Golden Hills coming down and going yeah. to the north, right? So, Mayor, just to wrap up real quick, these are recommendations we're bringing to you as a council for discussion. The report for you to I wanted to get, you know, and show you the recommendations as you now go through the report and see the numbers. You can see where that is, um, and we'll take directions at this point on how in discussion. So, turn it back to me. Do you know if this the traffic study from Horrocks included the? Uh, New commercial building and apartment complex that are proposed to be built at the at Canada Canada Center. Center. Oh, at the Canada I think, Center. I think the yes. mayor. I think the yeah. mayor. Are you referring to? The yeah. Mayor? West, yeah. West. Yeah. West. Yeah. It's in there. Yeah. Okay. We, the we, traffic count that will come from those buildings. Yes, that yeah. is correct. When yeah, those yeah. typically aren't huge compared to the traffic that's already there. I mean, you're on. on Wasatch, your 15, 18,000. We, in their, in their studies, we made them go back and use the actual uh, trip generation model as opposed to observed because the observed was a little less than the trip generation model. So we pushed them into the trip, chip, <coughs> trip generation model. How many major snow days did we have where we have this major problem? How many days did we have this last year? Do we know? The, 
I, I don't know. You I don't have know a total about. count. Here's here's the problem um, with Big Cottonwood Canyon. It's kind of an anomaly. It used to be that we closed Big Cottonwood infrequently, but the last two years it's been a major problem, and I, it's a shift in the usage in that canyon. Big or Little Cottonwood closes eight to ten, maybe twelve times a year for avalanche work. It closes frequently for avalanche work, but when it closes or hard closes. Uh, the canyon for extended period of time that's due to avalanches coming across the road. Big Cottonwood is not that case. They don't get stuff like that. It's the canyon load based upon the resort usage, if that makes sense. And it was common to back that canyon up on weekends and on specifically on holiday weekends, the long weekends. And that's when we focused our extra enforcement was long weekends. So mm -hmm. does that answer your question? Yeah, so Big Cottonwood Canyon, maybe what? Closer three or four times. Well, it's not closed. Well, it's traffic I mean, is no, it's not low. three or four. It's, it's just inundated. It's on weekends right. and on the holiday weekends that we're seeing heavy loads in the, that canyon. It's so if it's snow snow on a the powder Tuesday, day, it's yeah, snow day. Snows on a Tuesday, it's Wednesday, Thursday, up. you're better. Absolutely. Did we arrange that? Yeah. <laughs> Well, we don't like Wednesday. That's garbage yeah. day. Our cloud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so as we talk, this this is important information as we look at our budget processes, um, our retreat information, and even if you want to do it before then, we can have conversations about amendments. But I think this will lead into diff different discussions that we're going to have to have on prioritizing projects like these throughout yeah. the city. Yeah, what I would ask of the council now is probably to spend some time in this yeah. in study, and then we'll have another uh, uh, discussion in a, in a council meeting or two. And, and I think we'll it's a good start, to... though. It's a good yeah. start to kind of see yeah. how we can mitigate the problem. There is. I will make, I'll make one more spiel on... Roundabout? <laughs> no, on, on, on road closures. They're, number one, when you close a road, you only reduce the traffic by 12 to 18 percent, at least for the two places I studied that directly in contact. It wasn't the vast majority of the traffic or the traffic counts stay there. Um, uh, to me, something like that is a that's like that needs to be a bulldozer action because the connectivity and stuff with the other things I think outweighs. Uh, anything you get from closing the road, whether that's for emergency services or just even, I mean, that's not going to break my heart because I don't, I may have driven <coughs> over on that particular piece of asphalt a few times in the last 20 years. I just don't go but there. But if you live there. But if I live there, it, it's it's a big deal. So if you uh, live between Pippin and Racket it, Club, you do have. It becomes a big deal. Well, so the residents that have place. come to me live between Pippin and Rack Club and, and and say just stopping all of the traffic and the parking coming further up to past where, where the closure would be would be worth sending them back down to Pippin. The the the, the long term version of this is <coughs> La Cresta and Rolling Knolls. Knolls. Okay. Yeah. La Cresta's a signal it would be the best way probably to get people out of the neighborhood on the island going either direction. But the, they decided to close La Cresta east of Highland. And so that pushed all those traffic, I don't know, whatever, it's a couple hundred feet south. And so we're now dealing with the, because there aren't any other egresses, the connectivity has been reduced. And we have that all over the city, unfortunately. Then we're dealing with the, the issues on rolling mills. I mean, my neighborhood, I've got four, but it's really kind of three egress points for 450 homes. So they're all focused. They all go out on Nantucket, my house, or Creek Road. That's that's the only way out. And so as you start to, that's why I have a, uh, a, a bad feel about reducing the connectivity as opposed to keeping it up. So I'm glad you brought up La Cresta. We'll talk about it another time, but that's become a cut through area and it's terrible. 5.30, they're trying to get over either, you know, either turn right on, on Fort Union. I was talking east. Yeah, but, uh, but I'm talking west. I know. And we'll talk about that. I know Matt's been down, down there and, and Tim's been down that. there, yeah. but we will have to go over that. But that's, no, that's another okay. discussion. Yep. Well, thank you, thank you, Matt, for leading that discussion. We've obviously got a lot to uh, this work is, through. This is a, 
ton of information. That's yeah. It and, is. And by the way, I'm going to email you the PDF. It's got nice color, color and the colors. Yeah. Color I, I, I was going to say I'll, I'll that, that, that this one here looks like a bad heart attack. attack. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of money. To print I will be emailing that to you during. Or we can see it on the screen. We don't have to print up a whole bunch of papers on it. Don't you? Yeah, that was my yeah, choice. Good, good yeah. choice. So let's move on to the so the next uh, item under staff report is, is, is city fiber options. Was this on this discussion or was that just a time change? That. Or is that a this thing? this is part it of the part study. Of that. That's not part of us. Yeah. Okay. So in in, in the <clears throat> this actually we're not probably not going to spend as much time as is allotted. Uh, we just will probably start with uh, an update. And did you want to take this? Okay, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So as you all know, we've had a number of different groups come in and present to you. We've had uh, Google Fiber, Utopia, CenturyLink, Comcast. Um, they all talked about their products, um, what they offer, what the the costs are. Uh, um, yeah, we're good. And so anyway, we we are willing to bring anyone else in if you would like to do that. We're happy to reach out to them. We haven't reached out to any other groups. Um, one of the things that uh, we'll need to talk a little bit about is is get your input on how you want to proceed. At least at this point, there there are cost benefits on a number of different areas. We are going to bring, after we met with Comcast last time, we're gonna bring them in and meet with some staff and the mayor about some follow-up questions that we have with them. I believe that's uh, the week after next. So anyway, um, we, we have had many of these groups contact us since they've met with you and are interested in pursuing this. We've had some communities even do RFPs and then make a decision at that point. But I think we wanted to have a little bit more discussion on how you want to proceed um, as we look at different options for fiber in the community. Yeah. And I think I mentioned, Mayor, to you and Tim, uh, I've, I've got a consultant that would give us the full spectrum. He has mm -hmm. been in it for 25 years. And if we could just talk about it and get the full spectrum, because he doesn't have an agenda to push who, and it would be very, we know we need to make a decision on this, but we just really, it's a very important decision with our infrastructure is probably number one. So to give you just a little information, one of the things that we're gonna talk about with Comcast as they come back in is even though it's not their model, you know, we would like to, to, to talk to them about uh, getting fiber to every home. And, and if, if we could be a model city or, um, anyway, we'll, We'll have that discussion with them, and and uh, and then uh, I don't know, Matt. Do you want to? Is there any updates at all with you with uh, Google? I know you've been in discussion with them as well, okay. the engineering side. Um, yeah, I've met with Google twice, my counterpart, if you will, um, at Google, and we've had some good discussions uh, per direction. I made contact, and we discussed. We picked up sort of where we left off. Um, we went through a few things. There was a little give and take on a few things, but there were still two items that Google would absolutely not even consider. They said no way it would be a non-starter for them, which were some issues that um, one of the issues, I don't know how deep you want me to get into that. Maybe not. Was that the indemnification they gave Salt Lake, or did you well, that was that's part of it. Part of it was an indemnification. Another was their construction, where they wanted to put certain utilities. Um, our our uh, insurance carrier recommended against what they proposed, um, and that went on quite a while back. Shane was involved with that. I know I'm catching cold, but that was uh, one of the other non-starters. They called it. So I just can't even talk if you won't discuss depth mm -hmm. and the uh, the placement of some utilities. Boxer, he just flat out said he won't discuss it. Uh, it was obviously the other, which I'm not. I we he and I tried to stay away from the legal stuff and leave that to the brilliant minds that be. Am I right? Um, but we, that's that's where it was. We've had two discussions. We meet again this week. We've kept that communication and that meeting set 
in case there's something as a council or you would like to discuss in that it's it's continued we 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 keep we've kept it open throughout the year we've scheduled every week have that. Okay. May, may I ask? Oh, I'm confused. Utility, you're talking about just neighborhood node type boxes and not, yeah, just kind of not having us any input on where they actually go. Correct. That they say what's going to go here and Correct. that's it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, junction boxes. I don't know about the nodes, but I know the junction boxes and how big the is the junction box? box. Um, Just a, a picture in irrigation box. If you will. Oh, okay. The green right. boxes, the, the uh, roughly the size, bit rectangular shape. Yeah. And, and, and what about re, if they have a yeah. failure and they have to dig up and re trench or something like that? Did they are they willing to repair that back to our standards? The road, say, the road. If if they if five years down the road something breaks, they dig it up. We have requirements if someone did they have to it. repair it, yes. Repair it back but to our in state. order for them to use their model, they won't consider using the the boring technique. No, that no I'm I'm mean, like if if someone has a if there's a water break, they have to go dig up the, the line they're required to build it back to a certain level, our 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 code. And if it's a newer road, it's a little more it significant. It would be our code based on if you adopt the micro trenching. Yeah. Okay. It would not be our existing code now. No. Well, and how was that different? Uh, our existing code requires them to go 30 to 36 inches deep. Well, no, I know I, if, uh, on the top, because I know if it's like a newer road, they have to do a wider Oh, if space. it's a newer road, we have a two year moratorium right. on seal coats, chip seals, right. reconstruction. If if the count if the way that works, our ordinance reads, they I initially reject a two year cut unless it's an emergency. If they want to fight it, not fight it, but if they want to do it, they have to come to the council and get a uh, exception or that. But the council does not have; they have to build it back to the moratorium standard, which is I believe ten feet okay, that's beyond. Big the second cut. I don't remember the it's, exact it's big number. Ask. It's a big ask and they have to go all the way across the road. There's a lot of things they have to do on the two year. We did discuss that two year moratorium because that includes our slurry seals and he's, he didn't realize that included that. Oh. And, you know, we just, we've just done 2 million square feet of it. And so that knocks those roads out of the game for two years. Even and any roads. Mm -hmm. For, I guess, particularly construction. Yeah. So oh, yeah, okay. are they still at eight to twelve? Is that what they're trying to do? Eight, eight, yeah, um, to top of pipe, but it's the eight from the top of asphalt to the top of conduit. And if your asphalt's four inches deep and your road base is four inches deep, you're right at the bottom of the road base. You're right in the road base in some in cases. So, so these, it's from the top. I'm saying them. from I'm saying if we're going to do eight, you go from the bottom of asphalt, and that's the non-starter as well. Okay. That put you at least what 14? I'm asking for 12 inches below bottom of road, bottom of asphalt. And they're unwilling to un, unwilling. And I I hope I'm representing that correctly. I think I am. Um, but they are well they'll be given every chance to clarify that but we'd have to watch that too because they'll try to yes. probably well, it's, it, it gets it, it gets to it's 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 not it's not free there's i mean if we want to uh assume the maintenance that goes along with that type of utility in our area then i mean we we, we can assume that responsibility and those costs but it, it it it's it yeah it 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 doesn't make it doesn't make their the service well for after, the installation. after the one year warranty we assume the responsibility of the cut as a road the the crack seal okay. we would oh. have to go in and crack seal it the percentage the project percentage of what the city puts out on roads is what percentage of that is our budget where's Scott oh he's I'm, um got to be we very, we very ran high. an estimate on that it it. It would cost us around fifty thousand a year once it's all in, and we had to start 
crack ceiling, those lines, if we take the number, granted this is a real swag, but if we take those numbers, we estimate around 50,000 a year to, 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 to end to our budget to maintain the cracks, if you will. Just the cracks. This crack ceiling is all settles. So once it's they're done, permanent. they wash their hands and say we're out. Of the well, joint, right. yes, not the line. Right, you know, I understand joint. that. Yeah. Huh. They'll want to keep the service up and running. Well, obviously, but I'm just saying the roads will be our expense. Yeah, correct. I'm surprised it's just 15 grand of crack ceiling, but I think that's just the five zero. Did I say 15? 50. 50. 50. Five zero. I heard 50. Yeah, yeah. And it's not maybe I'm not just saying we're doing if I did it all at one time, sure it would be higher, but okay. you know, I'm putting it on the five year rotation, mm -hmm. if you will. I think the other concern for me is we're doing this to create greater access for our residents as well, and they have limitations. You would not be included in that. There's other areas in um, Old Mill that would not be included. That's a concern. In, in, in their service. On their Google? Service, yeah. Wait, 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 Google is guaranteeing every household, I think. Yeah. They come back and say every home? I think so. Yeah. Um, before you said there were some limitations on some of that. Well, they have to arrange for the, the hub or the... How quickly right, they, yeah. they'll get to everywhere is different, but uh, mm -hmm. um, we can clarify that. Yeah. We'll, no, 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 the every address is important because, I mean, I've got... A, I've got, yeah, there, there, there's some of these private lanes they need to be dealt with. That's where we have some of the the issues mm -hmm. they may be the last ones done too you know what i mean as mm -hmm. far as timeliness because they mm -hmm. they have to range with the hoa okay we go here and then we're going to go yeah. through the same liability situations as the city does exactly just to reiterate we just talked the construction side i didn't outside yeah. of the location of the utilities based on liability or we don't allow it yeah. <laughs> one I of the things that, that alone. we talked about you and i was the difference in depth on the materials, and that was a non-starter still for them to help them. Yeah, you want to see how deep that is? Just walk 50 feet that way. Well, I, can, I, I <laughs> got really photos where you can show you where some on. utilities mm -hmm. did not clear what they should have, and we torn them out right here, just going down just below the asphalt. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so, it, I'm not saying everybody's perfect when they put them in, but now we, we we've all that's some... being replaced. Oh, well, I guess that makes sense. There been, and there's been a lot of fiber that's gone through there. And... No, those were the, the one fiber that was in there. Most fiber companies will put it down to depth and put a flowable fill over the top of it to keep you from hitting it. And so, but there are one or two that don't quite bore the way they should. I know that for a fact uh, because I've seen them do it and their contract is subcontracted. And they have very different standards. Yeah, a lot of it is going to really the subcontractors. That's where, yeah. Um, but we get whatever the subcontractors do. Okay. So we will continue this. I think we'll look at the option, Doug, that you talked about uh, by bringing in this person. Yeah. And then and then we'll, uh, like I said, finish our discussions with Comcast and then we'll do another update. So thank you. Next item on our staff report is a focus survey discussion. Uh, Tim, do you want to yeah. kind of lead us off with that? Is? Yeah, so so as you know, through our budget process and, and as we were going through the community survey, uh, you budgeted for two additional uh, focus surveys to focus on specific topics. What we'd like to do tonight is just have a, a brief discussion on and brainstorm and get direction from the council on the topics and types of questions that you want to put together. We don't have to craft the questions right now, but give us general ideas of what you're wanting to look at. And I have some ideas as well. And then what we will do is begin crafting those questions. And my hope is that on the first meeting of September, we will come forward to you with some draft focus surveys. And then we can really start having the discussion once we have those questions in place. In addition to that, the community survey that is, is being conducted right now, um, the data gathering will be wrapping up shortly. They'll be doing the data analysis and on the first meeting of September, give you, um, we'll send out the report prior to that, but we'll 
we'll let Kyrene come in and kind of present the findings of that report. So the first meeting of September is where we'll really look at the surveys significantly if that works for your schedule. But tonight, I'd just like some general discussion and direction on two different focus surveys. When I say focus surveys, really specific on topics, so one topic and another topic. Uh, these quick, I'm getting the idea of these are probably going to be a dozen questions. Probably want to be short. Much, yeah, it's going to be quite short, but um, is a dozen too many? Not necessarily. I think you can go. I don't think you'd want to go much more than no, that. No, dozen case, to 15 but... to 16. So here's one of the things that uh, Council Member Burrell and I talked about with the us not knowing the results of the community survey. Um, I do want to talk about some topics, but I, I don't think, I think maybe we want to bring up some things that we could put into this focused survey, but I think we might want to see results before we make a decision on topics, um, if that makes sense. But I do think it would be worthwhile to, to spend some a few minutes we talking about. We could always about, change and or add. Yeah. That, that, I, I would concur. I think it's important to understand uh, how the public, what their preferences and what matters to them because that's going to influence the topical, you know, surveys that we produce. We may find that, you know, Ellen Burrell was all caught up in this issue, but the survey finds that no, that's not what the public is interested in. You know, I think that in choosing our topical surveys, we really need some direction from this Y2A. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if we want to take that approach, I'm completely comfortable with that. We, yeah. we can bring the community survey back, let you digest the data on that, and then go into that. That's completely I fine. Think, I think it's going to be some. And in the in the interest of full disclosure, I did not fill out the survey that I got on my cell phone. I figured it probably was a, You were one of the lucky people that got it, and you didn't I, take I didn't, advantage of that. <gasps> you did it. Yeah. Wow. That's not fair. Wow. <laughs> you would behave. I, I, did. Did. <laughs> well, I get all these numbers coming back, and I thought, no, one time have they asked my opinion. <laughs> They did That's ask good. my opinion two years ago. I okay. had to take it That's two years ago. Yeah, that is, I'm completely okay. comfortable with that. I just wanted to make yeah. sure you knew we were we had this on our radar to start moving things forward. If we want to hold off on that, that's fine. I know a couple of the topics that we talked about as we were drafting the community survey was honing in specifically on land use issues. We talked about that with the planning commission the other night. But I'm completely comfortable in waiting and seeing what the data looks like and then come back and draft those. That's completely and I'm even okay with talking about some topics. We I, I just think we don't make a decision until we, we have a little bit more data. But but uh, let's spend five, 10 minutes. We probably don't need to spend more than that, but uh, on, on what you think some, some one of these topical surveys might look like. So any thoughts? Well, the, the two that I had kind of density land use some something that was yeah. a little more um and I said my interest in that would be to make sure that we're just not asking asking questions that have you know a little bit of this that you like this or do you like this do you want which which of these two kind of counteracting things which do you which where do you fall do you do you want more of this or would you have more of these things something like that and i don't know if you could even do specific part of that to fort union i think Fort well, union that's, is that's, really, that's, that's fine i mean yeah. typically um uh um you know maybe do, do you want us to uh do, do you want more density if it brings this less property tax for you or it brings more um transit to the area just some questions like that or or would you rather just because we talked about uh zero growth and that's that's a legitimate point of view to have but it has long-term consequences you can't just say i want no more growth and not expect it to have zero well, and impact I, on and your if i may add to councilman bracken's com uh, comment there just as we discussed in our joint meeting with the city council and the planning commission, um, I was so glad that Councilman Bracken brought up the importance of a piece of education. Like I think it'd be nice in these topical surveys to give a small glossary, you know, maybe a little one or two pointers on what, you know, land use. In fact, 
there were some really good questions, uh, you know, the way we, we compile these questions to, to get a feel for where the public's understanding, you know, of these things is. Because I think generally people who choose to live in Cottonwood Heights since the inventory, I don't know, we can ask our city uh, planner here, you know, what percentage of homes in Cottonwood, households in Cottonwood Heights are single family? Is it 80%? I, I don't know. Is it, I mean, oh, just yeah, really, yeah. I mean, super approximate. So I'm just yeah. going to be bold and say, say it's 80% single family. Well, people live in Cottonwood Heights because they want to have a front yard and a backyard. And so it's not going to be surprising that their preference is for single family, you know, maybe SR, you know, eight or whatever. So I think that we have to be careful how we craft these topical surveys, not to lead them to say one thing or another, but on the other hand, to make sure that we state, you know, why we are presenting this topical, you know, that, that, that uh, the state uh, is urging each city to do their part in providing attainable housing, you know, however we, you know, so, so that they understand that this topical survey isn't just, you know, hey, I, I wish everything was single family because they may not understand some of the financial so dynamics. Kind of like an, an introductory statement of fact to help people yeah, understand. Yeah, maybe it. a little glossary and a little introduction on, on okay. certain questions. Some may not need it, but I, I'd love to but, see it. But yeah, it, which, what's more important, the single family paradigm that we are in or that we have or more mid, mid middle well housing. and of course i'm gonna i'm gonna speak up for tod transit oriented development yeah. you know could you accept some transit oriented development density. along fort union some you know and explain that that's talking about density you know a modified we're not talking about what you see on the you know front runner and tracks lines we'll but we're tracks. talking about something that suits our small city but um, I think these concepts can be introduced in a way that, you know, yeah. the citizen and, and keeping it briefer. I, I so I'm so glad that we're going to do some topical surveys that because that is some of the feedback I've got from constituents that the current Y2A was, wow, that was long, yeah. you know. So we, I think we have to be careful in order to get the proper participation. Well, I think what you're talking about is push pull, you know, where you can kind you of guide careful. somebody into something. I think that we, when we talk about growth, we talk about people coming in, but we need to talk about businesses and how that affects, because that's very important to our tax base. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, one of the individuals from planning said, homes are really kind of a drag on 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 your, uh, I guess, what your finances are for your city. But I found that not to be entirely true, at least when we were going through feasibility studies for our city. But I, I think that. To say that they're all children, the people in our city, and they want to have ice cream for breakfast was brought up. I think we need to give uh, our citizens a little bit more, I guess, credence than that as far as, uh, but we do need to have planning in certain places, certain things in certain places. And I think responsible planning is important. Uh, and I think that that's our job is to try to help guide that growth where it doesn't impact the sing single family homes. And we we made a decision to let that, that off of Fort Union, uh, we made a decision when 90 residents said, we would like it to be this. And I don't think they were uninformed. I think they knew, number one, those would be ski rentals if they were, du you know, duplexes. Uh, it, would, it would change some of the dynamics of those neighborhoods. And I still think, and I will stand behind it, that we did the right decision. Whenever anybody has impact that they're worried about, say like on the Walt property off the of 13th, their main concern is traffic getting on the 13th. And I think we'll probably have to look at that and say, because it is, uh, it's multifamily living in those all around it. There were four homes that were single family homes. And that was part of the push to say, we don't want this. But if we can mitigate the problems from development, that's a big part of what we do here. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Well, perception. Uh, if you, you want to be very careful to not, you're not going to, you don't, you don't want to push pull it in any way, shape, or form. But there is sometimes, uh, uh, if you can establish, establish this is this is the percent, this is this is what happens if you do this, and make it objectively enough to make it, and so that there's because again, like I I, I said before, I don't think. I'll bet, I'll bet I'll bet ninety 
by 97% of the population of Cottonwood Heights has no idea that you can build a 35 feet on virtually every parcel in the city. Um, and that probably would, could in, inform a decision they might make otherwise. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. One of the things that I, that I think, I know we've got two of these surveys that we can do that we budgeted for. I, I really think um, one of them, whether it's the entire survey or not, is uh, town, does a town square feel, is it important? I know we've, we've had some questions in that. What type of plaza gathering places would you like to see in our city? Um, obviously that or, or that that can be relevant to some things that are happening hillside yeah and, and so <laughs> anyway that's something that in my mind I, i'm hoping to maybe uh get some specific resident input but any other thoughts well i you've hit on some of the ones that i had as well um you know mobility uh i think uh you know, checking in. Uh, I think there's there's questions that we can craft to get a better idea of of what uh, what what our residents want uh, in the way of mobility for all users. Uh, are they satisfied with safer, or do, are they aiming for safe and things like that? You know, because it takes money to do any of these things, and we've got to find out. You know, where our residents want to spend the money. I think public safety. Uh, is another area I'd like to better understand uh, a little more detail uh, on what our residents want related to public safety <clears throat> and and possibly a little bit about public engagement. I had some ideas for the other Y two A analytics survey that we weren't able to insert. And, um, I agree with that public engagement. I kind of would think we could even include that into the gathering what type of clauses and you know things they want. Um, well, great. <clears throat> Thank you all for your uh, input. So uh, let's move on. I've got, uh, let's see, so uh, a review of calendars and upcoming events. Uh, we have a planning commission meeting tomorrow, August 3rd here at City Hall starting at 5 p.m. Movie in the park. The next movie in the park will be Spider-Man No Way Home. And that'll be on August 12th at uh, Butler Park starting at 9 p.m. August 12th is, uh, what is that? It's Friday. Uh, Friday. It's Friday. 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 Okay. Friday. Yeah. And uh, a city council meetings, our next city council meeting rather will be August 16th here at City Hall starting at four. Uh, a community block party will be on our, uh, August 25th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at City Hall's parking lot. Who will be throwing that? Do we know? So uh, CHBA, the Business yeah. Association, is sponsoring okay. that event. Sherry okay. Martell, we we went over that quite extensively. Great. So, but we've done that in the past. It's kind of a, yeah. a modified version of the the bike ride and bites in the heights. Is we're kind of mashing them together. Okay, having a parking lot. Great. Kind of that will talk dogs. There will be food trucks there. there will. Oh, food. Yeah, yeah, a couple. Okay, great. Uh, another planning commission meeting on September 7th, the city hall starting at five. And then uh, future council meetings on September 6th and 20th, October 4th and 18th, November 1st and 15th, and December 6th and 20th. So we the next item, we do have an item to discuss in a closed meeting today, and this is gonna concern property acquisition. So at this point, I would entertain a motion to adjourn our work session and enter into a closed session. Closed open session. I'm sorry, say yeah. that again. I move that we close our open session and open a closed session for the purpose of discussion on real estate transaction. I second that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? If you adjourn the work session, we're not supposed to do anything. Hmm. <laughs> well, leave. <laughs>